do you consider yourself an organized person? Well, I kind of believe in organized chaos. See, at my place, we've got a lot of pretty boxes with a lot of crap in them. And when you open that Pandora's box, whoa, I got that mesh. Complete and total chaos. So, I kind of believe in organized chaos. It's Onika. And JR. And you are dishing with Dainty Dish. How are you doing, JR? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. What's going on in the world of JR? Uh, it's playoff time in dodgeball. Oh. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 <laughs> we're in our last playoff game battling for last place. Oh. Yeah, it's been that kind of season. <laughs> A lot of fun. That's um, good. Yeah, I'm just, you know, doing the improv thing too and more uh, open mics. So I'm just, you know, living my best life. Well, hopefully one day on the podcast you will share where some of those open mics are so our guests can come and see you. They're open mics so I can work on opening my mic material. <laughs> opening your mic material? <laughs> it's really more of a workout. I'm a working out thing. Um, like my, get the kinks out? Get the kinks out, yeah, yeah. Before you do the big show? Yeah, before, yeah. Before the big, nah, not big shows, but like, you know, regular shows. Regular shows? Yeah, you know. So it's going well? Uh... Yeah, I'm I'm finding I'm finding some some stuff out. I'm, <laughs> I'm working some stuff out and bombing a bit, you know. Is it observational cool. humor? I'm not going to answer those questions with you right <laughs> now. Just, just leave me alone with it. Like I don't care about what your opinion is or anything. No, about. I didn't I didn't have an opinion. So just, I was I just curious. Just stop, I don't care about your I just stop being curious. Curiosity killed the cat. Okay? Amen. So just Amen. leave it alone. Yeah. Amen. Okay. So stop asking me about what I'm doing and answer my question. How are you doing? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm doing well. Um, mental health day is actually tomorrow, so I haven't had that yet, but I did have it last week and it went well. Um, injured myself at the gym again. I'm, I'm sorely out of shape. I'm more out of shape than I thought that I was. Um, I injured my chest plate this time. Last time it was my shoulder. Who knows what it'll be next time, but I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm going to keep pushing and see what happens. And, um, I had an amazing day at work yesterday. Actually, my grade 11 English teacher, Miss Rose came into my workplace And she saw like she was just like a breath of fresh air. She was the same Miss Rose from high school. I saw her and I'm like, Miss Rose. And she's like, oh, Nika. She goes, you look a little older, but the same. And I'm like, (laughs) she looked older, too. Like she had the little grays in her hair. It's not like the same as because she started at um, my high school the year that she she did that our grade 11 um english course and i remember one of the first things she said to us was that song by alanis morissette isn't it ironic is not the explanation of irony and then she explained irony to us so it was really really she was just a really cool person and i let her know that she was one of the like reasons her and some other teachers that i had in high school were one of the reasons that i'm like kind of where i am today in regards to my writing because they really really encouraged me so it was a really really special moment to be able to like measure her size her get her in a bra like it was good so yeah that was work and other than that nothing else nothing else everything's going pretty well okay congratulations (laughs) thank you jr (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh like he's so sarcastic (laughs) you're such a sarcastic um but i want to talk today about disorganization um, I thought it would be a great topic just because mom, when uh, mom and I spoke the other day, she was telling me about how she always knew that I was getting sick when I was um, like when my room was a mess because I generally keep my stuff neat, like books, alphabetized, clothes, color coordinated, like everything kind of has its own place. But when I'm in my um, rickatics, as my cousin Nikki would like to call it, my rickatics, uh, I'm not so organized. Um, I'm more cluttered. I'm more unfocused. Um, and everything's kind of a big, big mess. I'm sure you've experienced that with me. Yep. What was the experience? Of your cluttered? My clutteredness. Uh, which one? Which? He says, which one? Guys, he says, which one? There's been so many. Yeah, I know. There's, there's, been, been, there's been a few. There's been so many. 
Well, it, it's just a sign, I think, of people's mental health um, when they're unable to declutter their lives. There's a couple of people that I'm aware of in my family that are just, they're just messy. They're messy. And it seems like they're messy for no reason, but there's always a reason behind it, be it something like anxiety or depression or they're going through something. There's always a reason behind not keeping your area clean. Like I come into your space all the time and it is decluttered. There's not a lot here. You know, everything's neat. Everything's tidy. You know, that's what I'm used to coming into your space with. But you go into some other people's spaces and you can't even see the floor. Okay. Um, have you ever experienced that with other people other than me? Like, and have you thought to yourself, like, what's going on with them mentally? Uh, it hasn't actually, I actually haven't thought about it that much. Mm hmm. Don't um, think about it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't, I like staying in my space and I don't like really going into other people's spaces because you find it messier than your space no i just like my space and i don't like other people's spaces i'm just very like i don't know my experience is a lot of people's spaces are just messy or than mine Mm -hmm. and uh i know i know the lack of care that i put into my place sometimes Mm -hmm. and if i'm putting this kind of lack of care into my space and it still appears tidy like you're in my space right now, and you must, you're like, yeah, it looks it looks okay right now, and I'm like, this place is a mess. Like I had, people, I mean, it is messier than it normally. Yeah, would like, be, I, had, but... like I, had, I had people here last night, so mm. it was it's it's a, it's, it's in a mess, but uh, it still looks relatively livable. It's w- extremely livable, but I know the lack of care that I put into this, and so sometimes if I'm at someone else's place, and I'm like, okay, I know the lack of care that I can put into my place, and this is still, I could still have my mom over here right now and not. Be, feeling kind of way, feeling kind of way, right? Like it's it's still clean. Um, so I'm like, okay, if I put this little care in, how much care do you put in? And my parents always, when I was brought up, they're always like, how you treat your space is, you know, how you're going to treat the world, the people, you know, out there, and just, I don't know, I just it's just a disappointment when people's spaces are messy and yeah, because your space is a reflection. It isn't just a reflection of your mental health; it's a reflection of your life. I often think if your space is a mess, then your life is a mess. You know, when I go through my depression, I find I don't do things like I don't I don't make up the bed or I don't wash the dishes and I'll do it for like days on end. You know what I mean? The space still looks decent, but it's it's different. I feel different. I don't have the motivation. I don't have the energy to actually put into my space where I live. You know, and when that happens, that's a problem. Like, that's a huge problem. So I try to always, you know, I made my bed up this morning before I I left the house. And, you know, I made sure I tidied up. Is there dishes in my sink right now? Absolutely. Because I, you know, ate dinner last night, didn't feel like washing the dishes. But um, it's like when it piles up, you know, and you can't see your floor and you throw your clothes on the floor and you throw your panties on the floor. And I have a story for my aunt. She, she... She had a guest over and the guest left their underwear just on the floor. Like, just dutty. Like, didn't put it in a hamper. Just troops on the floor. What is that person thinking? What What's going on with them mentally? That they think it's okay to go to some stranger's house and leave their drawers on the floor. No, it's more and more the things of, like, you things you practice at home are the things you're going to practice out in, in the street and in the world. So... If you're a person at home that doesn't have a hamper and you drop your underwear on the floor, then that's what you're going to do when you're out. Like, it's just... It's despicable. I mean, call it what you want. It's just a habit you, you might have. Like, uh, my habit is to put dishes in the sink, right? Even, mm-hmm. though I, even though I have a dishwasher, I put dishes in the sink. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it's dumb, but I put it's something I've noticed. Like right now, there's dishes in my sink. There I have, is. I have a dishwasher. There's, there's glasses mm-hmm. in my sink, but I have a dishwasher, so that's a habit. But that then I have. you wash those dishes, don't you, or do you throw them in the dishwasher? No, I'm hoping to put those in the dishwasher. Like, okay, it's, but you it's, just it's, start off it's, in cause, the because I, I always that's that's what I've always done. It's just mm-hmm. it's just a habit, right? Like or mm-hmm. um, I have a I have a hook behind 
the door in my washroom. Um, so I always hang clothes there. Mm. I've done that since I was a kid. I, I just it's a habit. So if there's a if there's a hook in the washroom, I'm probably gonna hang my jeans there. Okay. You know, like I don't know. It's, we we these, there's those, like we talked about habits. I think in, in a in a previous episode. Episode. I think so. Yeah. Anyway. But I mean, my habit has always been to because growing up, Saturday was cleaning day. That was like training day for us. Like you had to clean the living room, the kitchen, the bedrooms, vacuum, sweep, mop, do the mirrors, do the toilets. Like I grew up in a clean, clean environment minus like my sister's bedroom. Uh, <laughs> I'm whatever. I'm going to call her out. She's a mess. She's one of the messiest people wow. I know. Um, she she tends to leave her stuff lying around all over the place. and And because she's the baby, we pick up after her. But there's another, and I'm not going to call out her because I'm, I'm not going to just say, but there's another cousin of ours who, um, again, like her life seems together. Like she seems to have her shit together. She has her job, her car, her school, whatever it is she's doing. But since I have known this young woman, you never can see her floor. You never can see her floor. I used to sneak when I go to my aunt's house and sneak and see her room. And you could never see this girl's floor. Like everything was just, it looked like, it looked like Santa just vomited Christmas presents all over her bedroom. Like it, it, it was, it was terrible. And the same thing with my baby sister. Like she's just a mess. And I want to know, you know, my whole thing is why? Like, what is it, what's going on with you mentally that you can't declutter your life? Maybe the realities of life, uh, I have no idea. The reality of life and the idea that you realize you have no control over anything except for the clutter. I don't know. I'm not, I, have, I don't know. This is, you're, <laughs> you're like, I don't know. I have no idea about this one. Like, I can't, I can't I help think, you. honestly, I think it has to do with a lot of depression and anxiety on people's parts like i think that when people become so depressed about their situations just in life they can't control themselves i feel like they have no control over their space and it gets to be out of hand but it's not even things like just messiness and cleanliness it's things like being chronically late why would you assume someone would be chronically late like not respect other people's time or schedules like why would one do that, do you think? You answered your question right there. They don't respect other people's time. But do you think it's just as simple as that? Do you think it could not be something that's blocking them mentally from being on time or wanting to be on time? Like, it's, it's you're not... You're narcissistic. You're narcissistic? That's what you think it is? It's narcissism? Well, I mean, I I think it's you don't respect other people's time, but if you're asking me for, to say something else, I'm like, okay, I'll throw that out there. But I think it's a matter of not respecting other people's time and not respecting your own time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It, you don't respect your own time and you don't respect other people's time. That's that's pretty much what it comes down to. I think there's a lack of respect. I think, it's, I think it, there definitely is a lack of respect. But again, I'm going to go back to a person's mental health like i think it's also a mental blockage as well like they don't sometimes like i i know when i'm having it like a, an episode i don't i don't think in terms of time i don't consider time and it's not because i'm in a narcissistic place i just don't consider like time doesn't exist to me like five minutes could be five hours and i might not notice that time passing because I'm in such a condition that I can't see, you know, what's going on around me. Like, I remember the episode I had with, um, when I was working at CIBC and you had to come pick me up that time. Yeah. Um, I was outside in front of the CIBC having lunch, talking to people, just chatting away, not cognizant of the time. And I was at lunch for what was supposed to be half an hour for two hours. I was gone. And I didn't recognize that I was gone for two hours. They had to call. They were calling my parents. They thought I might be at a local bar. Why they thought I'd be at a local bar, I don't know. But I just had no sense of what was going on around me. And I'm not saying that's the case for everybody. But, you know, these things happen with, you know, when it comes to disorganization, 
it's it's related to people who have things like OCD or depression or anxiety or mania in their bipolar. Like they're all kind of interlinked. So if that is the case, is it just disrespect? Is it just, you know, not caring about other people? Or is it about not taking care of yourself? I think you said multiple things there. Because mm-hmm. I think you... you, you uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you said that people that are late sometimes it could be it could be the it could be based off of a mental health condition such as mania and then you ended with saying that uh how did you injure how did you end that little thing there because I, I, it, it wasn't the same it wasn't a mental health thing um it was so, mental health is self-care is mental health like i was talking about maybe they don't they're not taking care of themselves Take, yes but you're not taking care of yourself so one of them is one of them is a chemical imbalance, and one of them is a choice. Is what I'm, what I, is kind of where I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm seeing from what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the chemical imbalance where you make poor decisions, um, and I guess doctors and scientists have said that when someone's in mania and they do things, they're not aware or conscious of their decisions, mm-hmm. right? And that's 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 pretty much been. In, in a like court the of law, standard, standard yeah. court of law, you know, like all that. Okay, fine. Um, when someone is making poor decisions, that that comes from a lot of other factors, like you know, bad parenting and uh, um, you know, being self centered. Uh, and I I, I I I push largely towards bad parenting because. The reason I'm clean today, because don't get don't get it twisted. Like there was a period of time in my twenties where, yeah, my floor was covered with clothes and stuff. But you know, like it's things that my parents said as a child. My mother would like, "You want roaches? You want roaches? Okay, <laughs> live like that. You're gonna have roaches." And my dad, and then my dad, by example, by like in my household, there was no such thing as cleaning Saturday. That's not happening. It, you clean every day. Clean as you go. Keep the place clean all the time. You see something dirty. That's why you see me when my floor is dirty. I clean it right away. Amen. Right. So like, I'm, I'm, there's no such thing as Saturday morning. I'm going to get up and clean. No, because if my floor is clear, clear, dirty Thursday night, I'm not waiting till Saturday to clean it. Our big thing was the kitchen had to be clean. My mom was obsessed with her kitchen, and the kitchen had to be swept and mopped every single night. Dishes done or in the dishwasher. That was a given. Everything else was like no, so, on a but, Saturday. But, but, I'm, but I'm like I'm saying though, it's like so for me, it's my kitchen because I've worked in commercial kitchens as mm-hmm. well, and then it's the washroom and it's the bedroom. Like those places are clean, and that's all I have in here. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, the place has got to be clean. But uh, I think it's that comes down to bad parenting. Like if if you're if you're if it's not a chemical imbalance, it's bad parenting. But what about your emotional state? kind of dictating your actions what if you're in what if you're in an emotional state like i know you have your feelings about depression and anxiety no no no. why just just stop stop with that stop with that we're having a conversation right here so the emotional what about the emotional state what about a person's emotional state what if they've gone through something or something's happened to them that's made them feel like they can't accomplish certain things like cleaning a house or making it to an appointment on time or being chronically late. What about a person's emotional state? That can play a role. As long as we're saying that it could play a role and it's not just, as you said, narcissism or they just don't care. I mean, it's not for some people that they don't care. No, no, no. I was was just getting clarification Mm -hmm. on what you said. Mm -hmm. I didn't give my opinion. I just was asking for clarification of the things I thought, okay, after everything that you said, I was like, okay, are these the two points that you were trying to make? Mm-hmm. And you said yes. I'm like, okay, that's it. I, ha- I, haven't, I haven't made a point. I haven't given an opinion yet. Okay, well, I'm asking you, what about the state of a person's emotions? How, how do you think that can affect their, or, their ability to be organized or their ability to live in chaos? It can have an effect. It could have a large effect. It could have a small effect. It, it's it's independent thing. I don't know how someone's. I can't speak on how someone's emotions or um, their what's the word? What was the word that you used? Emotional state. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't speak on how someone's emotional state um, affects how they 
how they live their life. I, I don't know. I can, I can only speak on myself, um, and I can only speak on the people that I've that I've seen. Um, and I I don't want to speak on people that I've seen because I don't know the whole story. But yes, it can have it can have effect on your life. Like people can be going through things, and um, they can be totally okay on the outside. And to the whole world, they can be okay. Mm -hmm. And then on the inside, they're they're just they're a mess. And that their 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 bedroom or could be a reflection of how they truly feel inside. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Absolutely. That's kind of that's kind of where I was going with it. That's kind of what I think. I think it's a reflection of what's going on with you internally when you can't keep your space clean be it your house or your vehicle or your workspace when you're unable to keep that organized and you're just completely disorganized it's just a reflection of what's happening internally with you well see now you're making a grandiose statement and i did i'm not i don't agree with that i'm just saying it could be that could be um it also could be a reflection of who you actually really are you could just be a messy person. You know, you could, like, there's the whole thing, there's a thin line between uh, a genius and insanity. So, I mean, you could just be a messy person. Like, you could be a mathematician that just writes things on paper and throws it behind you and just scribbles things on, on post-it notes and just throws it behind you. You could be living in that chaos, and that just could be your the way you do things. I don't know. I mean, it. I know, for me, I can't work in an environment that has a lot of noise and distraction. So I like to work from home, so that's why my place doesn't have a lot of noise and distraction. Mm -hmm. uh, I also know that uh, there's times where I get some of my best ideas while in moments of chaos. So sometimes I live in chaos. I don't know. But I, I, I do manage to sometimes somehow clean it up at the end of the day. Well, but, for the sake of this argument, I'm speaking on people who potentially have mental health issues, not those people that are just a mess because they're a mess. I'm talking about people who are disorganized because there's something um, going on with them and their mental health that's causing them to not want to either be hygienic or keep their space clean or organize their lives. So that's kind of where I was going with it. Okay. I, you asked me a question. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you here. I'm only, I'm only, you're, 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 you're leading me and I'm, I'm, I'm taking the bait. You're taking the bait. That's, that's, all, that's all I can tell you. So, I don't know, some solutions I think for disorganization is, I think, taking inventory. Taking inventory of your life and your stuff and kind of decluttering because clutter in itself is th they consider people consider that they people whoever consider that a compulsive action that affects your emotional state when you have clutter in your life like it's a compulsive kind of like hoarding but how do you know you because like okay when I come to your place, I'm just sometimes I've been just like disgusted. I'm like, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. Right. But you're like, what's wrong with it? It's fine. So how do you know? Like, how do you actually know that your your your, your place is, is cluttered is because some people don't actually know. That's one. That's something that I've recognized is that sometimes people just don't even know because I know I've had p stages in my life where. Uh, my life's just been a mess and I didn't really recognize it. Until, you know, a period of time later when I'm looking back. So I don't know. Is it possible that you're not aware of your life like is a mess? And who's to def say that your life is a mess just because you're you're not conforming to, you know, society standards? Ah, poof, beer conversation. <laughs> I think I think I clutter. I think I have clutter. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Sorry, I think that's a given that I have clutter in my home and my space. As I said at the beginning of the podcast, I like to hide my like disaster in pretty boxes. You've seen them, chests of 
suitcases and chests like fancy suitcases and boxes that I got from Michael's and and I hide all my stuff in there but when I'm not well and I open those boxes and I start taking out that stuff and leaving it all over the place that to me is when the clutter gets to be too much but do I know that I have to declutter my life well since the bed bug incident uh, most of my stuff is still on the balcony it's yeah it's all that clutter is on my balcony and i have to now go through my clothes and that's the thing like keeping clothes keeping toys keeping kitchen stuff keeping paperwork like things that you generally don't need that's what clutter is it's things that you acquire that you don't want or you don't need Right. And I've got a ton of that at my house, but it's the mental process of going through all of it. Mm -hmm. I'd rather keep it in the boxes and not think about it and not look at it. Like I've got a portfolio of of PR work from 2007. Like, do I need it? No, but I just don't want to throw my stuff away. And that in itself is one of those pulls, those mental pulls that's like, you got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. But what if you need it in like a year or what if you need it in two years or my clothes, for instance, I've had this dress since 2007. I'm never getting my 2007 body back, no matter how hard I exercise. That shit ain't happening. So why don't I get rid of the clothes that I don't need? Because I'm convinced I will wear it again. I will wear it again. I will fit into it again. Like I have convinced myself and it's, and I know it's not the right thing. I know I need to declutter my life. Like it doesn't help that I have like four closets in my, in my house. One of them is full of shoes that I can't wear anymore. Cause according to the, the ophthalmologist, or not the ophthalmologist, the chiropodist, I can't wear four inch heels. I never could, you know, I never could, but I can't wear four inch heels anymore. So what are those boxes of shoes doing in my, my house? give it away you know decluttering is is key and it's important and it's it's hard like it's hard it's harder than one would think like you're a minimalist like to me in my opinion i find you to be a minimalist there's not a lot of stuff in your house you know you've got all your essentials everything you need and you keep things to a minimal i on the other hand I got stuff on stuff on stuff on stuff on stuff. And I need to learn to get rid of all of that stuff because it is hampering my progress and it is going to hamper my life. You know, there's certain things, you know, I keep my journals. That's fair because there are things I could reference in their books. That's fair. Mm -hmm. But all the extra paperwork, awards or whatever the case may be, just general clutter, all that stuff on my ledge birds and this that and the other like i don't need that stuff in my life yeah and i gotta learn i have to actively force myself to declutter but even opening one of those boxes and seeing what's in them it reminds me of my crazy you Mm -hmm. know it reminds me of when i was not well yeah and i was storing things in my house picking up books from the those like standalone libraries that were in the neighborhoods and things I just don't need and it it just reminds me of that crazy time that manic time in my life and it's it's stressful it's a stressful thing it brings on a bit of anxiety for me because I look at these items and every item has a memory every item has something that reminds me of where I was not necessarily where I am now but where I was and it's very challenging to let go of that. So I think one of the solutions definitely is taking inventory of your your stuff. Go from room to room. See what you need and what you don't need. Put stuff away. Give stuff away. You know, shred that paperwork. Do whatever you need to do to declutter your life and also as I was saying to you before clutter is related to some of these mental health illnesses like OCD and mania and anxiety and depression even schizophrenia people who have these conditions tend to veer towards the avenue of clutter and keeping stuff 
And I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. I'm not judging. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying is I know how hard it is to let go of things. And letting go is the main part. When you're organizing your life, you have to learn to let go. Let go of the things that are holding you back. That's all I'm saying. All right. Sometimes you got to let go. Sometimes you got to let go. I'm totally okay with letting go. Uh, What else you got for me? And it's not just your cluttered space. Okay. Well, what else is there? Your cluttered mind. Oh, okay. Unhealthy thinking. Sometimes clutter will lead to that. Yeah, you got to think healthy. You have to think, you have to think healthy. Yeah, yeah, healthy thinking. Got to think healthy. So negative thinking is one of the things I think that goes along with disorganization and I wanted to talk about that as well today. Okay. When you think negatively about yourself, your surroundings, your work, your home, your study, and just life in general. Those could all be symptoms of having a mental health issue. I find you to be pretty positive. Um, that's because when I was going down a negative path, um, one of my mom's girlfriends was like, yo, you need to be positive thinking. And I just recognized that and just... I've tried to be positive since then. That was like when I was like 17, 18. So you used to have negative thinking patterns. Well, it's it's that age where you realize that you're a black man. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> no, that age. No, 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 it's serious. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even like, it's not like a joke or anything. It's, no, it's, it's serious. Re- the reality is when you really realize like, because my dad always like was like, you're black, you're different. Like, and I was like, yeah, hey, we're all equal. We're all the same, you know, yeah. like. Right, you know, and because uh, that's just pumped into you in school, but then, you know, it's that moment where you first get pulled over by a cop, you know, and you're mm-hmm. driving, you know, mm-hmm. you know, or that moment where you're in that store, and you recognize that someone is actively following mm-hmm. you, you know, mm-hmm. it's just those mo- those moments that happen in your life where um, you realize, oh, okay, it, you're different, and mm-hmm. it's just like you just go into that state where you're like, oh. F- this is my life okay and it's just like i don't want to say depression but i just say the reality hits Mm -hmm. and you start thinking of things in like and give things a negative connotation um and when that happened to me um it was recognized by the people that care about Mm -hmm. me and they were like you know it's not that bad you know like don't worry like okay you might have to you know work extra hard you might have to deal with these obstacles but yo just (laughs) you're breathing you're living you're experiencing something you know so just enjoy it you know and yeah so i could kind of just took that and then over the years like yoga starting that kind of thing and just like yeah you know getting to that state positive, of head po- space. positive headspace you know sharing positive energy with a group of people in, 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 a, in a class or whatever even doing it at home you know i don't know you just got to do things in your life that are positive and surround yourself with positive people i find that like as an adult you have to do things that make you happy have a passion mm-hmm. um and or just have things that you're interested in and do those things because other people are going to be doing them and the people that are doing them they're interested in them as well yeah so there's going to be always that positive energy mm-hmm. um and so yeah i don't know how does the way we think influence the way we feel in your opinion how we how we think influence the way we feel Oh, um, it's that whole half glass empty, half full thing. I mean, if you think, uh, let's say you um, you get you got fired from your job, mm-hmm. you know, you could think of it as, oh no, I got fired from my job. I'm never able to do anything again. Oh my gosh, I'm this is terrible. Or you can look at it as, okay, I got fired today. I probably shouldn't have been in that job in the first place. <laughs> and something better is probably going to come along. I mean, it just depends on how you look at things. Uh, 
And once you start looking thing, looking at things as always a positive in a positive nature. I mean, it's, there's some things that are just not positive, like you know, mm-hmm. like we, we and some things we've discussed in, in, on this on this platform, like you know, there's you know assaults and and abuse and those things. Those things aren't positive. But you talked about something last week where you said you got to make that make that circle of thing, the circle or. In a circle. No, I don't know. You said something about where you have to like look at the situation and say it's not your fault. I don't know. You talked about it last week. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I think I remember what you're talking about. Can you reference it? Um, I think I was saying when it comes to things like sexual assault and um, abuse, you have to look at it in a way where it's not your fault. Like you can't take blame for something that you couldn't you didn't have any control over especially when it comes to things like child sexual abuse you it's not your fault like you can't take on that blame and think to yourself you're responsible when it had nothing to do with you when you were too young to even understand what was going on in your life at the time Right. So, um, but there was an actual, you, you, you used it, you used the term and you described it a certain way. I didn't want you to go into the details, but okay. Whatever. Um, and it's also about your thoughts impacting your mental health. Like when you don't have healthy thinking patterns, um, it does impact your mental health. Um, a lot of people who have negative thought patterns potentially, potentially have mental health issues. Um, so, whether it's subconscious or Whoa. conscious, I can't let you make that kind of blanket statement because because mm-hmm. potentially uh, that's that's huge. Don't don't I? Whoa. I said potentially. You can't nah because look, everyone has uh, some negative thoughts at times. Like that's let's not let let's not like say that type. But put that kind of thing out there. No, I'm not talking. I'm not speaking on everyone in the world. I'm I want to. F- focus the lens on people with mental health issues that think negatively that's what i'm focusing the lens on so people with mental health issues that think negatively so that's including about their themselves they have a negative self-view they have negativity about their surroundings um their work life and their everyday life those people potentially could have some mental health issues those are the people that I'm talking then addi- about. Then you're saying they have additional additional challenges. Additional, yeah, additional Cause, challenges. Because if you're saying, because if you're saying that those people might have mental health issues, challenges, then you're speaking on a, on a broader sense of a group of people that may not, which means you're talking about a large populace. A large populace. Yeah, yeah. That, I, that, that's what that, that that I'm. I'm just. I'm just. I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening today. You're listening. I'm listening. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm finding it. I'm finding that I. Uh, that that's a skill that I'm. I, I need to develop a lot more. Well, I mean, it, I listen, but like, I just want to listen more. Well, seeing as I'm the one here and I have some negative self, like unhealthy thinking patterns, let's use me as an example. Okay. Okay. So, as for as long as I can remember, I haven't always had a positive self image, and I've I've. I tend to offlize things around me and we'll get into some unhealthy, um, unhealthy thinking styles in a little bit. But one of the biggest concerns with my mental health in the last year has been working with my therapist to get over the negative self-talk that I tell myself related to my sexual assaults, that it's my fault, that I was responsible that I could have done something to change things, you know, things of that nature. But sometimes, so, sometimes, hold on, let me let me just finish. So, um, what we implemented was a therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy, and it explores a person's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and how they impact everyday life. So. In combination with my therapist, I did two different types of exposure. And this is very good. This is a very good therapy for people who have negative thinking patterns because it helps you change the way that you think. That's the whole purpose of the therapy. It's been proven to be successful. It was successful with me. Um, So far, so good. You know, I still have a little bit of work to do in regards to some other issues. 
but it basically I basically had to do some exposure therapy and I think I've mentioned this to you guys before but I'm going to get a little bit into it now um one of them was called in vivo exposure where they used flooding I had to kind of face my triggers and face the situation that was troubling me and I went out into the world with my therapist and kind of just an example I would look guys in the eyes because I would I never used to be able to look a man in the eyes for fear that I was telling him attack me so I started looking at men in the eyes having conversations with men you know being around men you know to make myself more comfortable so that was the in vivo exposure flooding that we did and then our imaginal exposure was when I had to listen if you recall I had to listen to um, tell my story over and over again about what had happened and then listen to it in on my personal time and kind of try to make that memory or that flashback into a memory so that was the cognitive behavioral therapy that I went through and it helped me with my unhealthy thinking patterns like it was really very like much a positive experience so that's something people can do to help them with their negative thinking patterns if they can afford to so little by little through this therapy you're able to I guess confront your fears of being in the presence of men yes okay oh. Oh. I know we've, we've kind of talked about it a little bit but not really in, in those kind of details um, okay oh that's that's I mean that's I have nothing really to say there. I mean, well, it took it took a couple of months, and I as I said, I'm much better now. Um, I'm not going to know if it completely worked until I have a sexual experience with a man, which I haven't had since um, the exposure therapy happened. Um, but it works if you work it, basically. So it's one of those therapies that I would recommend people doing if they're having unhealthy thinking patterns now sometimes with unhealthy thinking patterns is it like I know we're going along the lines of you know you're not at fault for anything but isn't it some isn't sometimes sometimes the best thing to do is to actually take responsibility for what role you play or even if it's just a small role because like that's big picture thinking and yes you're right yeah it is. i think like, like sometimes it's like because i look at like sometimes even when there's situations where i'm like it wasn't my fault it wasn't my fault when you you step take a step back and look at the bigger picture sometimes like i'm not talking about like child assaults and stuff like that like kids are defenseless they they're not at fault at all like let's don't I'm not a terrible person. I'm not a monster. Okay. No, you're not. But I mean, sometimes, and then I say, but, uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm talking with, with, with that, with that kind of stuff excluded and all those, the terrible things excluded, like pick whatever your terrible thing is and exclude it like that, whatever. Um, but sometimes it's like you got, when you look at the big picture, you gotta look at, okay, did I do, I did do something. Um, whether that be, I, I should have been here. I chose to be here. Mm -hmm. And this bad thing happened be went at where I where I was, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not my fault that the bad thing happened where it happened, but I have to take responsibility in the fact that I was somewhere where I shouldn't have been. Yeah, that's like like, that's little, like, fair. Little, like little like little things like that. Like I mean, yeah. and, and like sometimes I think we get the wrong message when we say that I'm not at fault at all. You're not at fault at everything. You're not at fault. Like. I, I think sometimes no, we have to like take take a take because once you take that little bit of responsibility and you say, hey, okay, you know what? This is where I was at fault for this. I this little piece here, I play this small role. This is a one or two percent responsibility in this. Ninety eight percent of this is not my fault, but this small two percent is. And once sometimes I feel like once you accept that two percent, it makes it easier to really accept that ninety eight percent and say that you know that wasn't my role. I didn't deserve that to happen to me. 
I think that's one of the unhealthy thinking patterns that I wanted to go into. It's catastrophizing. Like when you blow what? things, catastrophizing. I, I did not blow something up there. When you when you blow things out of proportion, when your part is really small, but you think it's really really big, and I think that when it comes to things like sexual assault, um, I think women, as me as specifically, let's just go with me specifically. Um, I think I catastrophized the whole thing and I'm, I blew it out of proportion in my mind to the extent where it's like, it was all my fault. Every part of it was my fault when only a small part of it was my fault. Like the actual assaults of themselves, those were not my fault, but putting myself in a position where I am somewhere where I'm not supposed to be, that small part, that was my fault. So it's it's learning how to see things in proportion to each other. You know, um, that's really, really important. I find you to be an all or nothing thinker, though. Very black and white. And you think in the extremes a little bit sometimes. If that's your opinion, I mean, I can't. I'm not going to say anything about your opinion. Uh, I don't share my opinion with anybody most of the time. Um, so you don't really see the grays. Mm-hmm. Um, but sure. I mean. I, do you have gray areas? I do. Uh, but when it comes to the people in my, the people that I let in my life and uh, I'm very black and white with that yeah if you're not if i don't feel like you're a good person then simple you're out of my life if i feel that you're a good person it could be there could be a scale on good good people but i'm not gonna let you know my scale i'm just you're either in or out like i'll do the i do all the processing in the background um that's why it may appear that i'm black and white but i i just do the processing in the back of my head and in private because it's nobody else's business how i think and you get the end result and do you ever find yourself overgeneralizing? What do you mean? Define that. Um, when you come to the general conclusion that like because of women, one event, women. yeah, like it's like oh, that's all or nothing. Yeah, like, all, but generalization no. is like, yeah, it's the same. It's similar. Um, when you come to the conclusion that based on one experience, yeah, like, like, like nothing me, like, go, nothing's going right with, for instance, like, women. Like, like, like this whole like all women kind of thing. Like, yeah, if, if, I, if, if I've ever gonna be, been on that tangent, um. Do I do it or do I do I accept what what was the question? Do you do you do that? Do you um, do you accept that you do that? I don't think I do if I do say it in conversation, mm-hmm. uh I'm just saying it in conversation. Do I actually think that way and are my actions do my actions reflect that? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Uh I mean the only generalized things that i'm i'm firm on are my boundaries Mm -hmm. like so i'll make about myself so i'll make generalizations okay i'm not doing this type of thing and that's part of my boundaries and Mm -hmm. whether that's like in the business world in the um personal personal world. world whatever like then i'll make a generalization and i'll stick with it like if i say you know what i'm not drinking whiskey i'll just make a generalization I'm not mm-hmm. whiskey. That's that's a general blanket statement. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I'll go with it. I find that I do mental filtering a lot, and that's when you filter out the negative or you filter out the positive um, for the sake of the negative. Um, I try not to do it as much as I used to, but I always find it's like if someone compliments you and they're like, "Oh, your hair looks really good today," and you're like, mm, "I just put some." product in it no big deal no big deal you know i i filter out the positive um and i let the negative in you know someone says you have your your outfit's really nice today Mm, it's no big deal i just i you know i just threw it on it's nothing special you know so i i find that i do some a lot of mental filtering um i'm trying not to and it's and it is like things like taking a compliment being able to take a compliment, take the positive in with the negative. Um, and uh, I, I find that very, very challenging. Not so much as I used to. And now I'm like, you know, I'm fabulous all by myself. Who cares? Um, but like before, it was very, very challenging. 
Uh, no, I'm cool. I, You're uh, cool. I take everything with stride. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Like that's truly it. Truly appreciate no, it. Because I do. You took the time to say something. I, I appreciate you. The only, as long as you don't say to me, "You're brave." You say you're brave. Those are fighting words, and, and we're gonna have it out. And you're not you're not gonna know what hits you. Like, do you ever jump to conclusions? Um, which is technically mind reading. So conclusions about a person, or a situation, or I like to create them in my mind and then see if I'm right. Hmm. I like doing that. Creating the situation in your mind and seeing, like, playing it out in your head. Like, I like, I like making a judgment call in my mind, and then. Then approaching the situation and seeing if I was right, but like I go into the situation with an open open mind, but like I know I made this judgment call just just for shits and giggles, like just like if I meet someone new, I'll be like, um, oh, this person's this person likes orange and uh, they work in an office, mm-hmm. and I'll just be like let's play with that and see what happens. Let's see what happens, like. <laughs> Oh my goodness! But, but that's just kind of like I'm. Like, I like living in the moment now. Like I try mm-hmm. kind of just. I'm. I don't like getting all because I realize that everyone has those those thoughts where they get all caught up in their mind. Like we all have mm-hmm. those thoughts. We all have those. We all feel um, nervous. We all, you know, we're getting anxious under certain situations. So if we're all feeling this way, then you know what? I'm just gonna try and go the opposite and just enjoy the moments. For me, emotional reasoning can be a problem when it comes to my personal life. And that's making um, your feelings, thinking your feelings are facts. And we've talked oh. about this before. We've oh. talked about this before. Oh, my goodness. Feelings is facts. Your feelings are facts. I feel this. I, I feel this. So it must be a fact. It must be a fact, yeah. Yeah, I think I do that emotional reasoning stuff. You with think? A lot. You I do. Think? Okay. All I right. do do that emotional reasoning stuff with a lot. Or... I think I do that emotional reasoning stuff with Papa Dainty a lot. Um, I think I do. Um, I think I do. No, you do. Say it with me. I, I do. Yeah, good. I good. do. Um, and I'm trying my best not to. And it's it's about progress, not perfection, people. Progress. Always finding excuses. You see. Whatever. It's not an excuse. It is I, an excuse. It was it was so cute. They had an event at the house the other day, and he asked, um, "Is Onika coming?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, that's special. Maybe my feelings aren't facts. Maybe what I'm thinking, he's thinking about me because I'm jumping to conclusions as well, are not actually based in fact. Oh. So we'll find out more about oh. that at Christmas time. Oh. Um, Cry me a river. <laughs> should statements should ought must. Oh, don't Do give you those shit all me. over your life? I should. I should. No. You don't shit all over your life? No. Nah, I, I look at my life this way. Am I better than I was last year? Amen. And that's it. That's it. Personal growth. I'm not out here. I'm in my own lane. I'm not, I'm not trying to be anybody else. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to accomplish anything that you've accomplished. Um, actually, the best example of that was uh, someone that I look at and I'm like, this guy's accomplished is Joe Rogan, right? Like, I look at him as a very accomplished guy, you know. TV stuff, um, his podcast, his comedy, everything's accomplished. And I, I went to his show in Toronto, and he comes out and he's like, "This is the biggest uh, audience I've ever played in front of." And I'm thinking, this guy's a super accomplished guy, and he's walking out saying, "This is the biggest audience." So there's always there's always something else that you can always attain. There's always some in your personal story, mm-hmm. um, no matter what anyone else is looking at. So mm. I mean live your life live it in your own lane and you'll accomplish whatever you accomplish when you accomplish it I learned that from you of all the people in my life that I've learned about not shooting and musting and odding all over my life I've learned that from you living in the moment um, being proud of the accomplishments that I've I've had and the achievements that I've I've made and the strides that I've made and not saying I should I'm 35 I should be married with kids and a house and a job and you know I should be doing this in life I should be traveling the world I should all of that stuff is going to come in its own time as my mama always says everything in its own time so I try not to should all over my life though I think. I used to do, uh, I used to personalize things a lot. Um, so if something occurred in my life or in just something that wasn't necessarily in my control, I would make it my own fault. 
Like it would be my fault. Like I could give the example of, and it was kind of my fault, but um, when me and my sister stopped talking and I didn't want to give her space to like do her own thing. And I was just so convinced that like we would never speak again. And I was, it was just awful and it was all my fault. And I couldn't, the, the, there were things going on in the background in her life that were out of my control and so for me to think that this awful thing that I'm never going to talk to her again was me personalizing, you know, personalizing the situation. That situation was your fault. It was. It uh, was. 100. It one, was hundred, my fault. No, 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 but time the time part time after it. 100 percent was your fault. No, but the part after it where I personalized and said that we're never going to talk again. She's never going to forgive me. I don't know what's going on in her head. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know what's going on with her. Yeah. She's going through her own stuff in her own life. Yeah. And when she's ready, when she was ready, she reached out to me and now we're good. You know what I mean? But I personalized it to the point where it was keeping me up at night. It's all about me. It's all about me. Yeah, that's what that's what personalizing is. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. Personalized, not a license plate. And the last one I want to talk about is labeling. It relies on the premise that you are what you do. So, you are what you do, and as my mother so would say, if you're you are sleeping the company, around. You are, you are the company you keep. That's another one as well. Yeah, you are what you do, and you are the company that you keep. So, if you're sleeping around, are you a loose person? Does that make you loose? Or if you're if you lost your job, does that make you a failure? I think those are two different things, completely. It's just two examples, two random examples. Okay, if you're talking about random examples. No, just two random examples because, you know, you know the label. People will say things like slut or whore or tramp, you know, based on the activities of a person. But that's labeling and that's not right. You know, you don't know what's going on in that person's life that they're doing what they're doing or why they're doing what they're doing that you're labeling them. And sometimes you mislabel because you don't have all the information. I think this is a sticky topic because sometimes labels are appropriate and sometimes they're required and sometimes they are not. And there's no clear uh, way of identifying or coming to a consensus on which labels uh, are appropriate. Well, there's a few that are appropriate that we can... um, that we can are we we are happy with in as a society as a whole like um sex offender label um Mm -hmm. we're okay with you know the 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 the, um the the convicted felon criminal um label Mm -hmm. we're okay with the label of mommy we're okay with the label of daddy Mm -hmm. we're okay with the label of you know brother sister um lawyer doctor we're okay with those labels um, things get sketchy when you start putting in, you know, the mental health label. Um, you know, some people, you know, because there's there's a wide spectrum of mental health, and you know, some people that just suffer from maybe um, something as as small as anxiety um, get offended when they're grouped in together with somebody that's suffering from, you know, um, I don't know what's another what's on the high other end of personality personality disorder. disorder. You're you know like um, or someone who um, uh, is suffering from addiction, um, you know. Sometimes being lumped in with uh, mental health, it, 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 it's sometimes they feel like no, that's not the same. Some people say no, it is the same. They're they're related, you know. Like some labels, we don't we don't want to be associated with, or when we are, um, we want an asterisk beside them. I mean, I don't know. Like our labels, it all depends. Like I mean, some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are not appropriate. I mean. Things change over time. Like, I mean, I saw a recent article, um, uh, not an article, I saw an image um, that um, showed a, a, I think it was a Jet or, or um, Essence magazine cover from like the 50s or something mm-hmm. like that. And it, it said the word Negroes in it, right? Like, mm-hmm. you put that out today, that's a nah. title, that's a title you can't use today, right? That's a label you can't use today. But so, I don't know, like labels come, they go, I don't know. I really, I, it's something that, it's really tough because some of them are acceptable and some of them aren't and time with the times changing you know like who knows one day we unite like the nuclear family label that's offensive to some people today mm-hmm. you know like really 
I mean, so I don't know. I don't know. I think when it, when it comes to labeling, I think the challenge lies in, like you said, um, people being mislabeled. Um, you're not always what you do. You kind of are who you are. And when someone puts a label on that, it could be, like you said, offensive. Um, well, no, it's also it also could be offensive when, you know, the label's f- factual. Yeah, it could be just <laughs> or, as offensive when it's factual. Like when someone's labeling you as something that you are or based on the based on your actions, someone's labeling you based on your actions, you might feel offended, but no, that's an actual that's a that's a representation of who you really are. Mhm. Well, with some of these unhealthy thinking styles, I think it's important that people um and this is something I've done in the past as well come up with a thought journal like you're monitoring your thoughts seeing where the negativity is coming from and what's triggering you and what's causing you to think the way that you do um and it just to kind of examining yourself and examining your thoughts i think is really very very important um there's so many different negative thinking patterns we only covered a few today um but if you're experiencing any one of these i'm not saying you have mental health issues that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying that um you got to kind of find a way to turn the negative into the positive. And if you do have mental health issues and you're experiencing negative thought patterns, consult your nearest doctor. Um, see if you could get into some cognitive behavioral therapy. It worked for me. Um, it could work for you. There's so many different types of thought therapies that are out there, um, to change your, your, the way you think and the way you feel about yourself, because at the end of the day, the way you think is going to affect the way that you feel about yourself and the way that you feel about the world around you. So, um, with that said, that has been the dish of the day. Um, JR, uh, if anyone wants to reach out to us and tell us about some of their negative thought patterns, or if you need help organizing your life, I'm pretty decent at it when I'm well, so I can give you some tips and tricks if you need to. Um, but other than that, JR, please tell them how they can reach us or share with us how you got over your, yeah, your situation. Yeah. Because we like that too. We want to share that with others. This is all about, you know, sharing information and yeah. sharing knowledge. You're right, anyway, So, um, yeah, you can reach us at dish, D Y S H, at daintydish.com. Uh, that's the email address. You can email there. You can also uh, check Onika out and more of her opinions and see what more things she's saying and what she's doing on her website, onikadainty.com. You can check out uh, what she's doing through her view her lens see who we've had on see put faces the people that we have on the podcast through her uh, instagram at best of onika and you can check her out on twitter at onika dainty uh you can check me out on instagram i've always got something new going on maybe possibly you never know if someone captures a photo best of jr you know uh and yeah that's about it we thank you so much for listening we truly appreciate you if you're listening to us on apple podcast give us a five you deserve five thank you so much if you're listening to us on any other platform youtube uh soundcloud thank you so much we truly 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 appreciate you thank you for listening we truly enjoy your feedback uh and we will keep doing this as long as we keep getting good feedback thank you Thank you. That has been, as I said, the dish of the day. I hope y'all have yourselves a very, very, very happy hump day.